after I went on my toxic rant on YouTube a couple of months ago, um, basically I just started looking into the elimination of as many chemicals from my life as I could. Primarily my motivation was eliminating endocrine disruptors from my life, but there's just a lot of like really nasty things that don't belong in our homes, let alone near our bodies or on our skin. Or um, And your skin too is your largest organ and to think that like if something touches your skin it would not be readily absorbed through your hair follicles and your pores and through your skin into your bloodstream is just crazy. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna like go down that toxic rant rabbit hole again. Um, so let's just talk to you a little bit about my low poo, no poo cleansing method and what that looks like for me and um, the success that I have had uh, doing low poo, no poo on my hair. All right, so I'm just gonna start with the basics here. I'm not gonna try and like recap um, everything that is posted, but there is a Facebook group called, I think it's called No Poo, um, No Poo, Low Poo, something, but I'll link it down below, and that group is an extremely great resource in terms of like just wading through the mountains of um, information that's out there regarding transitioning to a low poo or no poo shampoo or cleansing method. So when we say low poo or no poo, we basically, no poo is short for no shampoo and it refers to shampoos which are free of commercial um, cleansers like sulfectants and so forth that are basically just like low grade um, harsh chemicals that are basically stripping your scalp of sebum which is giving it that squeaky clean feeling um, but also stripping your hair of essential oils that your body makes or uh, sebum that your scalp produces that is fantastic for the hair of or from sorry for the health of your hair um, and it also is introducing um, chemicals right into your ecosystem sorry my phone's going off it's introducing chemicals into your the ecosystem of your body which have no place um, I just decided that I didn't want that. I'd read a lot about low poo, no poo, and um, seen a lot of people on YouTube and just online and in the different forums um, that had wonderful hair and great success with a low poo, no poo cleansing method. And so I just thought, I'm gonna give this a try. So the first thing that I did when I began my transition into low poo, no poo is I checked out this Facebook group and they have you examine the porosity um, of your hair and it's basically whether or not your hair is very porous or not very porous at all and I have about a medium or neutral porosity to my hair so um, a lot of the methods could work really well for me but for me it was just like about a trial and error and figuring out what works for me so there's ways to go about doing like low poo or no poo. So initially, when we talk about no poo, we are talking about not using soap of any kind, like not natural soap, nothing. So a lot of people, or no shampoo, is like they'll do um, massage their scalp um, under hot water for like a few minutes and you let the um, kind of hot water run through their hair and that will kind of pull away a lot of the sebum buildup on your scalp. For some people this method works really well, um, for others it does not. I personally haven't um, gone down the no poo path at this point. I have used no poo in between washes. Um, but in general I am cleansing my hair with a low poo method about every seven days. So the first thing you wanna do is pick a method. I personally began using a low poo uh, and the Facebook group does refer to it as an OH poo and I don't remember what that stands for but I can um, find out and put it in the description box below. But the first thing that I started using was Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, which is this stuff right here. I'm sure that you recognize this little um, bottle. It's kind of famous. I think what I have in here right now is almond scented, but I 
I started out with citrus and I don't know that the scent really makes a difference but I would imagine that because it's naturally scented I would imagine that there's a difference in the essential oil that's present in it but ultimately this um, method of shampoo even though it is low poo I found that it did not work well for me because we have um, moderately hard water and the hardness of your water matters when you're talking about the method of low poo uh, cleansing that you want to try because some of the cleansing methods can react or bond with the minerals found in the water. So in my particular case, I found that the mineral content in my water was bonding with something in the soap, the, um, I think they're called saponins. So Dr. Bronner's is a saponified um, oil soap, I believe is what it's called. But the mineral in the uh, hard water or the moderately hard water was reacting with um, the soap. And so that caused for me kind of a waxy buildup. And my hair on the first day just would never seem very clean. And by the second day, it did seem cleaner, but I also noticed that my scalp was like just having little flakes and I would brush it and there were like little flakes coming out. So I did that method for, I would say three shampoos. Um, and the other thing is that I think one of the most important things, and I think that that Facebook group kind of reinforced that, is that, like extending the time between washes. So initially I was, I think I would wash my hair every two to three days and, and it would really start looking oily. And it would look oily because I had stripped my scalp um, just dry with conventional shampoo. And so your scalp goes into this like overproduction method where it really starts producing a lot of oil to compensate for all the oil that you've stripped from your scalp. Um, it didn't look great. It felt okay. It didn't feel obviously as squeaky clean as a conventional shampoo, but then it's not going to. And the first few cycles we were traveling and so I feel like the water uh, at the places that we were was a little bit harder than I'm used to at home. And I didn't know all this about hard water back then. But so about the first three cycles, I used this Dr. Bronner's soap. My hair kind of got a little bit of a waxy buildup to it. I came home and I ordered something, which is kind of like what I ended up just using. And that is this shampoo bar. It's called Hibiscus Henna Shampoo Bar. And I can show you, I don't know how well this will focus. This is the shampoo bar that I started using. It's called Soapbox Fox Shampoo Bar Hibiscus Henna. And this stuff I just got from Amazon. So this stuff was like, I want to say around $12. Um, but this stuff is, I think, technically classified still as a saponified soap. Soapbox Fox is as much about luxury and indulgence as it is about its commitment to pure and, uh, I'm sorry, pure natural and organic ingredients. Our soaps are handcrafted in small batches using only the finest ingredients. Our artesian spirit and the time-honored cold process method of soap making. So yeah, it's saponified. Soapbox Fox offers more than just cleanliness. It offers a relaxing and gratifying sensory experience full of warmth, luxurious texture, and rich aromas. There's a whole bunch of stuff that it does not have in it. Phthalates, no parabens, no sodium laurel or laureth sulfate. Uh, no artificial dyes, no petroleum, no phosphates, no EDTA, I don't know what that is, no glutens, no animal cruelty, no propylene glycol, and no GMOs. I'll show you what it looks like. It is a bar of soap like this. It's got a cute little fox on it. It smells like very herby and earthal. <laughs> herby and earthal. It smells very herby and natural and earthy. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with earth. <laughs> anyway, um, so it comes like this. I basically, I just stick a soap dish in the shower and I just use it in the shower like I would normal shampoo. It's got a bunch of um, ingredients. However, I can pronounce every single one of them, but it does say um, distilled water infused with Aretha, Shikakai, and Amla. And those three ingredients in particular are natural ingredients that are basically ground up flowers or herbs that a lot of people use in place of 
um, any type of shampoo or low poo. So that would be considered a no poo method, but because it has been sup saponified into a bar, it is considered a low poo or OH poo method. So I just get in the shower and I um, wet my hair just like normal. Use this to just kind of like suds up all over my hair and I really just concentrate on using the pads of my fingers to massage it into the scalp. And then I personally like to let it sit for just like a minute maybe before I rinse it out. And then once I rinse, follow it up with a, um, a conditioning method that is pretty typical for low poo. I have this bottle here, which is an old um, glass Voss water bottle, and I mix it up to about right here. I add apple cider vinegar, like a Bragg's, I think is the brand that we buy, and the rest filled with water and give that a good shake. And then it just depends. Sometimes I'll pour this entire thing down on my hair, and sometimes I just use half of it. Um, but I do notice that the longer I let this sit, the less clean my hair looks on day one, and the less time I let it sit, the cleaner my hair looks. So apple cider vinegar restores the pH balance in our hair and gives your hair like amazingly a very clean, shiny, um, healthy look. It, it replaces a conditioner, um, whereas a conditioner would deposit like silicone and unnatural things to give us the perception of having very soft and healthy hair. The apple cider vinegar actually restores your pH balance so your hair actually is soft and shiny as opposed to just kind of like tricking us into thinking that our hair is soft, shiny, and healthy. So when I first began low poo, um, as I said, for about the first three weeks I was using Dr. Bronner's soap and I was trying to extend days between washes, which I think is pretty important. Um, so at first I just extended it to a four day wash cycle and then the next week I tried to get to five days and the next week I tried to get to six days and then I did six days for probably two to three weeks and then I moved to seven days and I'm currently at seven days. If I do something really sweaty, like if we go hiking or I'll like do yoga out on the back deck um, and my hair gets like, my scalp gets really oily like from sweat, I will get in the shower and wet my hair and either just do a no poo, like a water only wash, or I have also um, used leftover brewed coffee that I had to do a rinse and the coffee is pretty acidic and it can help remove the sebum buildup against your scalp as well. But currently I'm on about a seven day wash cycle. Right now on day four of my wash cycle and you can see, um, I, my hair, if anything, I think my hair looks a little bit dry. Um, if you kind of like look in my scalp, there's no sebum buildup really like over on this side. Um, underneath, if there was going to be sebum buildup anywhere, it would be underneath. But as I said, like in here, it's kind of starting to get a little bit, um, it doesn't feel as dry as it does toward the ends. but. If anything, my hair feels dry. It definitely doesn't feel like there's a sebum buildup. Whoa. <laughs> um, this is like hard to do in the camera. Okay, so yeah. So day four, I feel like it's still really good. I basically, I don't heat style my hair at all. I just let it air dry on the day that I wash it and then the next day, I'll throw a little bit of curl into it and brush it out. And um, basically then I'll just spot curl it like by day, um, but really I just don't have to do anything to my hair except for brush it for about seven days. So that is a real time saver in and of itself. My scalp feels so much healthier than it ever has. My hair feels so much just thicker and like it's almost denser and as a rule naturally I have very thin hair. I have a lot of hair and I have always lost so much hair every day brushing and I think part of that is due to my thyroid but just also the fact that I have so much hair it looks like I'm losing so much hair every day when I brush but I think that this shampoo method has really just like made me feel like I have just thicker hair than usual not just like in the amount of hair in my head but the actual like density of the strands of hair the last thing that I think is really important um, for me 
and my no poo, low poo um, transition has been brushing. So there's this concept called scritching and preening and scritching and preening is basically taking the built up uh, sebum from your scalp and just massaging it through your, uh, all through your scalp and then actually just, you know, taking and just basically like pulling the oil down through the shaft of your hair. I do a little bit of that when I'm thinking about it, but the biggest thing that I do is I got this um, wooden, this bamboo brush, and I brush my hair in the morning and night with this, um, and this really helps to distribute the oil down the shaft of my hair. The other thing is that I ordered this metal pin brush, um, just kind of like by accident. I. I don't know. No one told me to order it. I just I just got it. And at first I thought I wouldn't like this or that it wouldn't help in my no poo, low poo, or I should just start calling it low poo journey. It's really fantastic. This has been kind of like the most amazing find for me because the stimulation, like it, I don't know how to describe it. It's like metal pins up against your scalp. It is literally like getting a scalp massage every time you brush your hair. I tried to keep you guys zoomed in nice and close today so you could like really see the, um, you know, how my hair is looking. I would say that I keep showing you under here. Um, and yes, I have a lot of grays. Yes, I have a lot of grays. It is what it is. I'm not a young woman anymore. Um, but anyway, just so you can kind of see, like, no BS. This is, like, actually how my hair looks every day. This is, like, the most low-maintenance thing I could have possibly conceived to do. Like, if someone had said to me, yeah, just stop washing your hair, um, or just wash your hair once a week, like, legit, like, we all know those people that are like, oh, yeah, I, wash, I only wash my hair about once or twice a week. But this is, like, legit once a week. Um, and I might try to extend it out like maybe more. There's some people in the forum that go 14 days without washing their hair. Typically they have curly, um, you know, curly hair and it's on the drier side, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how far I could get. I will say with washing it every seven days that it's just such an easy routine. I wash my hair on Fridays. That's it. And that will be my one single hair wash for the whole week. I may move that around, like if I know for a fact I have to do something like sweaty and strenuous on Saturday, then I may push it out until Saturday. But for the most part, Friday seems to be my day so far. I would say that it's probably been two months at this point. Because I know I went for about three weeks with Dr. Bronner's. I didn't like mark a calendar like, today starts low poo. but. Um, I did about three rounds of Dr. Bronner's and then I switched over to the Soapbox um, Fox shampoo bar and I have been through a whole bar of that already so I feel like it's been about two solid months so I have probably six to seven shampoos with the uh, shampoo bar. Each time I think that my hair just gets better and better. I'm telling you it is like the most low maintenance. It's like healthy to begin with. Like I was looking at this, um, the ingredients on this box and literally it's distilled water infused with Aretha, Shikakai, and Amla. Um, and then everything else, it goes into oils, coconut oil, olive oil, sustainable palm oil, sodium hydroxide, which I don't know what that is, but I'm going to Google it. Castor oil, shea butter, avocado oil, cherry kernel oil, walnut oil, and broccoli seed oil, orange chamomile, lavender, cedarwood, rosemary, vanilla, and so on. You get it. It is just the most like indulgent sensory experience because it is just so earthy and wonderful. And so in addition to basically washing my hair with oil once a week, I'm also not putting on all that harmful, terrible stuff you know, onto my scalp that's being absorbed into my body and being endocrine disruptors and messing with my thyroid function and my hormones and yeah. So anyway, if I had to tell you like the top things that you need to do this, I would say pick a method, find yourself 
a method, check out that Facebook group and pick out a shampoo method, what you want to pursue. Give yourself a goal and a timeline um, in terms of like how long you want to extend out your washes. There is a transition period that can last anywhere from one week up to, I don't know, a month. Most people get through it in about a month where your hair kind of goes haywire and it doesn't really know what to do, but I promise you, you will get past that. Um, yeah, so pick yourself a shampoo method. Try and stretch your days out between shampoos and get to a number of days that you feel is suitable for your hair type. Get yourself a couple of natural, wonderful brushes to move the oil down the length of your hair and stimulate the growth of hair on your scalp and also just stimulate your blood flow in your scalp and get your circulation going. And then honestly, the apple cider vinegar um, rinse that I use, obviously there's none in here, but that has been awesome. Like, I think that plays just as an important part of all of this as finding a great shampoo. So anyway, if you have any questions about low poo, no poo, um, in terms of like what has worked for me and my journey, I would love to hear from you. Leave your questions and comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're into it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.